Hello and welcome to a special World Championship preview episode of the Snooker Loopy podcast. My name is Tom Mayhew, I'm a comedian and I'm joined by my, by my very, very, very good friend. You might know him as uh, the man behind Evening Hazel, but I like to call him... Da, da, da. It's Joe, the beard that's feared, Hannard! Well, good evening Hazel. Good evening, hey. everybody at home. Uh, very, very happy to be here, Tom. I've been looking forward to this all week. Um, our annual now, our annual World Snooker Championship preview, and we are doing it on Crucible Eve. And I know Tom very well. He will stay up through the night to get this edited and out for you on that Saturday, Crucible Day 1. So hopefully uh, you're going to enjoy the snooker obviously back on the bbc and uh, you'll hear those famous words at some point but it'll probably be good afternoon hazel um but yes pleasure to be here tom and really looking forward to it. it's going to be a cracking world championship i think what's lovely and i was thinking about it earlier today is that you know because we love snooker so much that every time the world championship comes around I'm always as excited as as I was last year. Like you think, eventually you'd go, oh, yeah. it's my it's my twenty fifth world championship. I'm not I'm not that bothered. But you do just go, oh, it's exciting, isn't it? It's it's the proper snooker. It's proper long form. The best of the best, and the qualifiers this year is probably the best lineup. Definitely, I can remember. I don't know whether you can remember mm. a, a different lineup you'd pick up, but I I really can't remember a year where it's been this. Uh, it's kind of strong and it's kind of unpredictable. Yeah, no, I think you, you, you bob on there. I think the qualifiers are really strong. I think there's a lot of seeds that are struggling for form this season. I think there's going to be a lot of close matches. Mm-hmm. I was baffled by how many deciders there were in the qualifiers. I think we could yeah. have a fair few deciders in the first round. I think it's going to be really, really tense over the next few days. It's going to be really you know gripping snooker but as you say it's it's long format um and i think it's possibly the most open world championship for years i know there's there's two big favorites for the tournament that that are due to meet in the semi-final if if they indeed get there but um yeah who knows uh where this is going to go i'm sure we'll do our actual predictions later on i know that on the event prediction uh we like doing that every year and seeing who uh, comes out on top but uh I- i'm going into that not having a clue who i'm going to end up picking so that that, that mm. tells me it's there for the taking for for quite a few players this year so yeah looking forward to it well, provisionally, world number one at the end of the season at the moment would be Mark Allen, which is pretty incredible. Like, obviously, the world championship wow. will throw up changes, and you know it could be anyone, probably from Mark Allen to Sean Murphy, who, if they win it, would be number one. But um, yep. it's it's crazy, really. Like the the number of players who I think have a shot this year. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and. You know, I, uh, we'll, we'll probably say that, and it'll be an O'Sullivan Selby final or something, which uh, <laughs> so many people will be predicting, and uh, and we'll look like absolute muppets. But uh, it wouldn't be the first time, would it, Tom? So uh, we'll no, we seem to do that every episode, so it's fine. <laughs> um, but we'll swiftly move on. Uh, obviously, myself and Tom do this podcast a lot so if you are new around here make sure you do uh, subscribe to tom's channel and uh, keep an eye out on his channel over the world championship not only will there be plenty of podcasts we're hoping to do pretty much daily it won't be possible all of the time but we uh, we will be popping in and out and uh, trying to keep you up to date with all of the action especially the the funny side of things and uh, tom will i'm sure put some sketches together i think he's already got the suits probably lined up and uh and out there uh <laughs> on the channel i know you like the suits tom mate it's already it's already up it's already up there you go what can i say what can i say but uh there'll, there'll be plenty of bingham <laughs> and plenty of sean murphy and a dash of rob walker in there as well <laughs> but it's uh always a obviously dash of rob walker. <laughs> <laughs> there always is and look at those shoes um <laughs> so we're looking forward to that but uh in our last 
proper episode of the podcast, we uh, talked about the qualifiers, Tom, and we mm-hmm. set up a, a little predictions contest where every year we try and predict the, the, the 16 qualifiers to varying degrees of success. And, uh, well, well, we'll quickly run through your 16 qualifiers because, as you say, Tom, it is um, – it is a very, very strong lineup this year. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, first of all, mm. we have got the jackpot, Jack Lazowski. Um, unfortunately, both of us predicted Matthew Stevens would uh, would be Jack Lazowski. So, um, the way I do this, I, I give points based on how many matches they win. So, Matthew Stevens, in theory, won three matches because he got to uh, round four. So, we'll give him three points. Bless his cotton socks. Um, but yeah, Jack yeah, Masowski was the first one. You know. Mm, he did well, Stevens. I think. He did. I think it was not as close as people was expected in that match. Like Jack really turned up, which, to be honest, I think makes him um, probably have a better shot at some sort of good run if he, if he can get past mm. uh, the early rounds, you know, because he played very well. So, hey, well done, Jack. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I I know early on in the match with um, Matthew Stevens that there was a a few big breaks and it looked like it was going to go close. I think it was, um, you know, two all, three, three, three. um, And then Jack Lazowski just just pulled away as he can do. But he is going to be very dangerous, as you say. Um, Speaking of dangerous, um, next (laughs) next qualifier, we're going to sound awful at this. Uh, Tom, uh, it's Ricky Walden who is is my second favourite player, so I'm delighted about that. He obviously beat Mark Davis in a ten nine decider. I'd went for Tepchaya on new, um, and he went out in his first match, so I'm going to give him zero points um, because he didn't win anything. Uh, and Mark Davis, well, he he got through a couple of matches, uh, got himself to mm-hmm. that fourth round, and was also close against Ricky Walden actually. Um, but I'm yeah. certainly delighted about that because I love Ricky Walden, as you know, Tom. Yeah, you do. He's one. Of, he's one of your favourites. The, the Marathon Man is that his nickname? The Marathon Man. Yeah, I, I think he's now known as the Walnut. I think because uh, it actually turned out <laughs> oh, that that's better. He, he ran the uh, he, he ran the Manchester Marathon. I think once. Um, or the the half marathon or something, and therefore Rob yeah. Walker called him Marathon Man, and actually he doesn't run at all. Um, so yeah, <laughs> there you go. But uh, as you know, Tom, I'm going to Middle Saturday at the Crucible and ten mm-hmm. o'clock, and uh, there is a possibility that Ricky Walden could be playing at Judd Trump in the second round there Ooh. in the final session. So that could be. That could be a very uh, close one, but we'll talk about that possibility a little bit later on. Uh, on to the next one, and this this will have delighted all of our fans out there, um, that the Space Sausage... And I, I will say that since we, since we christened him the Space Sausage, he has turned his career around. He was going on about that. It's his, <laughs> new, his new woman and her father-in-law. Um, all of that, that has changed his snooker career. I think it's the mm-hmm. fact that we've given him a bit of Space Sausage, and, and I think he is... <laughs> I think he's absolutely loving it. But yeah, Dominic Dale, if you're so, not yeah. sure. Uh, he... <laughs> He went through against He Gudang, and uh, we both said that Dominic Dale would win, so he gets four points uh, for each of us there. Um, and you've got an, an early lead in this one, uh, Tom. Oh, shall so, we end it now? 10 7 then? at we the just, moment. Shall we end it there? Let's, let's end it there, Joe Common. That's all done. Yeah, that's all done. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Dominic Dale, obviously first time in ten years. Looking forward to to seeing him there. Obviously, we'll um, we'll preview him um, when we, when we get to the matches. Uh, next up, and I said this, I called this in in the the podcast. I said, don't be surprised mm-hmm. if Jamie Jones beats Neil Robertson. Don't be surprised about that. And what did he do? Yeah. He went and beat Neil Robertson ten nine. Um, wow, Neil Robertson not at the World Championship. For the first time since two thousand and five, I believe. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Really, like Neil was not going to be there, but I think Jamie Jones is. A, I mean, he's he's underrated, but also inconsistent, which is probably why he's underrated. But he's a player on his day. I think should be, you know, top twenty five in the world at least. He's he's a very decent player yeah. when he plays well, um, and I. 
I almost think Neil maybe underestimated how hard it would be because Neil was literally saying mm. since December he was going, oh, it's fine. If I drop out the top 16, I'll just qualify. And in my head, I was thinking, it's not going to be that easy because you've got yeah. former, you've got other uh, former I... world champions in qualifying. So I do worry about Neil Robertson, actually. I think um, I think over the last year or so, he's been a lot of talk and not a lot of action on on the table you know i think he has said oh I'll, I'll be better for it you know i'll i'll come back stronger i'm taking this time off and i'm going to be stronger and it it just doesn't seem to be happening for him at the moment and actually he's found himself sat alongside sean murphy in the bbc punditry team this week um he's going to be there monday to friday so that's an interesting shift for neil robertson and it'll be interesting to hear him in the commentary box so not not who i thought would be commentating this week, I have to be honest, but well, there you when go. Dominic Dale qualified, he was saying to Dave Hendon, like, "Oh, we're going to have to update the rotor for Eurosport because he was down to qualify and now yeah. he's qualified, so he won't be able to commentate." We'll have and to bring thinking, Fergal well, in. <laughs> there we go. That is that was Dominic Dale just popping in for two seconds to just say that to us. Thank you, thank you, Dom. Nice to hear from you. But uh, they could have just got Neil in. Pleasure, they could have just Hazel. Swapped them out. <laughs> yeah there you go there you go um but anyway we, we of, both got that wrong with of, neil uh, robertson speaking of rob walker and his shoes apparently when dominic dale was last at the crucible rob walker said that rob was about to sort of introduce him they were just backstage and just before dominic came out for a world championship quarterfinal he said to rob oh what do you think of my shoes i've got new shoes and rob went dom you're about to come out in a world championship quarterfinal when you're talking about your shoes. <laughs> uh, but that, that's a cracking stat, isn't it? That the last time Dominic Dale was at the world championship, he, he was at the quarterfinal. That's, that's bonkers. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, uh, anyway, yeah, we both got Neil Robertson wrong. Three points for us there because he did actually win a match. Um, on to the next one. Um, I went for Zhou Yulong. Um, he went out 10-4 to Jack Jones and you were deliberating between Jamie Clark and Jack Jones and in the end, you went oh. for Jamie Clark, unfortunately. Yeah. So you get um, you get uh, two points because he got to the... He won... Um, the second round um, and got to the third round but we lost to, to Jack Jones unfortunately but a good victory for Jack Jones I think Zhou Yulong is a uh, is a solid player so uh, who beat James Cahill 10-0 in the in the previous yeah. round um, absolutely bonkers yeah absolutely um, but mean, moving on yeah go on you, you, it's very rare there's a whitewash in the, the qualifiers so or at the world championship at all like I think maybe it's only the fourth or fifth ever yeah. maybe or something so yeah very mm -hmm. impressive by you long yeah I, think most I mean there was one earlier that. in the uh, yeah. in the qualifiers there was one earlier in the yeah, qualifiers I... with Jimmy White and Martin Gould wasn't there you know that, well, that doesn't Martin Gould wasn't was poorly that doesn't count <laughs> <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor golden balls <laughs> Jasper Carrot there, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, on to the next one. We have got uh, Stephen Maguire, who was our um, qualifier. And this was a, a battle of our two predictions here, Stephen Maguire and mm. uh, Yuan Si Jun. And unfortunately for you, Tom, uh, Stephen Maguire won out. So uh, that is a 4-3 victory to me there. Um, Stephen Maguire back at the Crucible. Um, I Again, I think he could cause some damage uh, you know we're saying this about all of the the players that have qualified so far they could go and do something it's uh it, it really is uh, quite quite amazing but um after Stephen Maguire uh I, we're going to po possibly my biggest mistake of the the whole of the predictions here <laughs> um and that was that was back or not backing Stuart Bingham who is uh looking mm. over my shoulder over there there. He's not if you manage to get the video guys. on this, this this looks awful right now. He's not happy, is he? <laughs> yeah, he's giving he me a bit of a glare. Though. Actually, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's quite terrifying. Um, 
But anyway, <laughs> I went for Liam Highfield, and Liam Highfield didn't win any uh, of his matches. He lost in a decider to Stu Carrington, who very nearly beat Stu Bingham, by the way. It was 10-9 in that match. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, to be fair, you know, Stuart Bingham did get through, but he, he squeaked through, really. You know, 10-9 against Carrington, 10-8 against Heathcote. I think at one point Heathcote could have made it 9-7 and sort of missed the pot to make it 9-7, yeah. so it could have been very different, but um, lovely to see Bingham make it back. I don't know if he'll mm. uh, have a good run at the Crucible this year, because uh, you know, he's had probably the worst season of his, his past 10 years or so, but hey, he's back, yeah, yeah. and I saw a lovely video of him on Instagram earlier, and he was dancing uh, with the Crucible backdrop near him, so already it's good to see him back. <laughs> Yes, uh, obviously, uh, Stu Bingham will be will be delighted to be there. And again, he could be somebody that causes issues. I, I don't think anybody's expecting him to do that, but I suppose that takes a lot of the pressure off him. So good luck to him. We obviously will uh, cheer on Bingham from this podcast. We're a huge fan of uh, Bingo. So hopefully he will <laughs> go um, and do... Do the business um, at the Crucible. Uh, next one, another embarrassing one for me, I'm afraid. I went for Lucas Kleckers um, in the next the, the next round here, which he did win. Uh, he got to the third round of qualifying, and you went for strictly Chris Wake, Wakelin, but uh, yep. he went out in a decider as well to Robbie Williams. One of the big... I mean, for me, I think that was the big surprise on, on Judgment Day was, was Wakelin not making it through. You know, he's... He's ranked 20 in the world. He's had a fantastic season and 10-9, so he was close. But I really, uh, I was surprised and I think he'll be gutted not to make it. But hopefully, you know, he his form is he should be aiming for top 16 next season if he keeps it up. So we'll see what he does. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed for him. Fingers crossed. He's, uh, you know, he... he he is a good player. I think he's improved a lot since he won the um, won the shootout. So, yeah, finger fingers crossed for him that he'll be back stronger next season. Um, into the next one, I went for Marco Fu, and it was looking good for a while actually. Marco Fu was playing really, really well um, in his first and second mm-hmm. round match. Uh, obviously, played Ken, knocked out Crafty Ken, um, and then early on in the match against Jose and Vafai, it was uh, going. Uh, tit for tat, but unfortunately didn't happen. Um, so it's only two points for me. But you correctly predicted another qualifier, uh, Tom, with Hossein Vafai. You're on this fire, Stephen well Maguire here. Oh, it's all going to come, come yeah. crashing down eventually, but it seems to be going all right at the moment. <laughs> well, on to the next one. Matt Salt um, is, is who I went for. And uh, you went for Joe O'Connor, so you you got through that one again. Um, Ten eight. Yes. Uh, Joe O'Connor won that in a hundred and fifteen minute frame uh, to finish it off. Tom, that they cut the coverage is, from. I can't believe. I mean, we should quickly say I thought it was a disgrace they cut the coverage because <laughs> the cameras were still rolling. Like people were sharing VPN links to still watch the match in a Chinese broadcast. The cameras <laughs> yeah, yeah. were still rolling, so. I think they cut it because their Eurosport slot timed out, which everyone always goes, Eurosport's the best. But I'm like, well, the BBC didn't cut the final in 1985. So I just thought it was a bit of a stupid move by WST. I thought it was maybe maybe down to them paying the commentators. I wondered if if it was that. I, I mean, I thought, but even if it was that, leave it rolling with no commentators. Like... People would happily David Hendon commentated on the virtual snooker final and didn't <laughs> presumably didn't get paid for that. So you know, um, he probably got paid more than we did, Joe. Probably got paid more than we did. We got yes, paid nothing. I'm sure that's he why did. Uh, we did. But we yeah, did. I think, I think they should uh, anyway, on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Go on, Tom. Well, no, I, ju- I just think they should have just left it on with no commentators and let people watch it because you know to, uh, I like David Hendon I like the fact he's clearly a snooker nerd and he loves the sport but no one was tuning on on Judgment Day going do you know what I'm watching this for because I really want to listen to Dave Hendon for six hours that's not what people were there for they were there to watch snooker <laughs> and so they happily would have watched it without him 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, bonkers, uh, I think, is a word for it. And it was just, just crackers how it was. It happened when Matt Salt went to the toilet as well. So, yeah, it was just really, really weird. Um, <laughs> like, had he not gone to the toilet, what would have happened? Well, at one point, there was a guy who was sat in the audience watching it live. And he was sharing photos on Twitter going, oh, look, Matt Salt's caught Joe in a bit of trouble. And people were following yeah. the match by looking at this guy sending pictures on Twitter. <laughs> oh, oh it's hilarious. Uh, back to the Stone Age. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> really but what's weird like that. is that they had funny. full coverage of every match, every match in the qualifiers, except the last one on Judgment Day. Mm. <laughs> it just it yeah. makes no sense but uh anyway we will we will move on um i went for chow yu peng in the next one so again um not getting max points but uh, i did a little bit better than you because you went for for maha long um who got beat by chow yu peng uh. i mean he did pretty well to get to um round three but uh but couldn't get past he beat martin chow o'donnell yu peng. he beat martin o'donnell who's had a fantastic season so um He's clearly a decent player. The mistake I made is I said in the last episode, there's always someone who's lower ranked who gets through. And this was the first season probably ever where every player is... But the lowest ranked player is 45. So no one, there's no low ranked player who's got through this year. So yeah, um, yeah, you, played, yeah. you did well with, with Chow. And he, he almost beat Pang. It was very, mm. a very uh, well fought match. They were kind of going back and forth throughout. So... Mm. I've heard Chow Yu Peng's apparently retiring to go and play Chinese eight ball, but um... I've heard that they were saying it on commentary that he's going to go back to China because he's fa- he's got a young family and he wants to play Chinese eight ball. But I'm not sure. I mean, they, they've said that, so but he's not said it. It's not official, so I don't really know. It'd be a bit of a loss to the tour, really, because he's a very good player. He's very decent. Um... You know, mm. but maybe because mm. he's one one of the very few players who was banned for match fixing and then came back. Um, so maybe he doesn't feel as comfortable on tour now. Maybe that's part of it. I don't really know. Or maybe it is as simple as he prefers China, which is fair enough. You're Chinese, mate. Like I, I get yeah. it. If you want to yeah, be with yeah. your family in your in your home, <laughs> mate. So it, but it'll be it'll be it'll be a shame, a shame if he left because he got to a ranking final this season. I think so. Mm. He's you know playing some of the best nuclear mm-hmm. of his life yeah 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 absolutely um on to the next one uh i went for nopon sangham which uh, i was very close to oh, getting God. 10-9 um he lost to, to jackson page um I however went you for. went for uh a certain <laughs> fergal o'brien who lost to mustafa dorgan in the uh in the first round so yeah. yeah. Uh, that, okay, that was my big mistake. That was my. I, I, I went with my heart, Joe, and it it sometimes works, but that time it definitely didn't. Um, I at least exposed him. It to definitely didn't organ, that time. No, but hey, yeah. Well, anyway, we're yes. on to the next one. Seizure we we both went for, so uh, no need to talk about that one. Um, I went for Daniel Wells uh, in the in the next hat. Uh, Daniel Wells. Where did he get to? Um, he got to round three, lost 10 a to Liu Haishan, who, of course, ended up qualifying. You went for Michael Holt, who lost in the first round. I'm very disappointed <laughs> oh. by uh, Michael Holt, actually. Yeah, I don't think he played at all as well as he could have done. Um, I think he he should have. You know, he should be winning that match. Like, I don't know much about uh, Zing Zhao, but... You know, he should be beating that. But also, we should say props to Jensen Kendrick. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Jen- Jensen did uh, did superb, actually. Um, considering we joked about him when um, when he was qualifying for Q School, we uh, mm. I, I remember us specifically picking his name out and saying, oh, Jensen Kendrick's just some random, random 40-year-old guy that they've picked off the, the, the streets um, to, to take a spot and he ended up qualifying for the two and he, he nearly got the, the, the crucible. He was only three frames away. Yeah, how, and when he was playing with you know, the pressure of losing his tour card but managed to beat Jordan Brown, um, which was a great performance, but also we should say well done to 
by Yu Lu. You know, she won seven frames against J- Jensen, which is, I think, by far the best performance of mm-hmm. any female player. We did pick her out for having a chance of beating him, and uh, I think she justified it. Seven frames is, is not bad at all against a player who almost reached a crucible. Yeah, I mean, of course, Rianne Evans um, was whitewashed 10 0. That was a rather bizarre match. Well, but... especially, Joe, because you said last episode if Rianne Evans doesn't beat Oliver Brown, people should maybe discuss whether she should have a tour card. And uh, safe to say she didn't beat him. But I, I would argue that I think the performances of players like. By Yulu and like players who won matches like Mustafa, Mustafa Dorgum and Mohamed Shahab, like they're both players who are on tour because World Snooker are trying to, you know, get players on these tour cards to to broaden the sort of reach of the of snooker. Yeah, and yeah. I think the fact they both they both won kind of justifies it because you know everyone went on about Stan mm-hmm. Moody, but he lost to Mohamed Shahab, and you kind of go, well, fair play, <laughs> mate. It shows that Shahab yeah, yeah. deserves his tour card, and yeah, you know. I'm sure it won't be Absolutely. too many years before yeah. Bayou Lou is also beating someone. Yeah. I mean, do we reckon Stephen Hendry might have been whitewashed had he turned up? Yes. Yeah, I, I reckon he... <laughs> I mean, that's probably why he didn't turn up. He probably knew it was coming. And he went, actually, I don't yeah. fancy yeah. losing 10 nil to Vladislav Gradinari. <laughs> I, I want a little bit of dignity left. Um, anyway, uh, uh, next you lost that uh, when I you went for David Gilbert. Um, you lost all your dignity. You were dressed as a bin. <laughs> oh, what a load of rubbish, eh? <laughs> there you go. Uh, anyway, I went for David Gilbert. I'm pretty smug about this one. Um, I went for David oh. Gilbert to, to win. Uh, that one you went for David Lilly who um, went out in the third round so two points for you there and then the final qualifier we both went for Ryan Day so that's four points each so the grand totals are in Tom well, how do you think it's gone I was confident until I got to Fergal and then I got to Michael Holt and that worries me a bit so i think it'll be very close i think this could be our own version of a decider i think very close but i think you might have entered it well tom um you scored 45 points overall out of a possible 64 which i'll say that's pretty decent pretty decent um and I got 44. So congratulations, oh! Tom. You win. You win. Oh, oh fantastic. The, cl- the classic uh, best of 89 frame match. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's beginning to annoy me now. He's beaten me in a few uh, <laughs> a few a few events recently. But we all know that the qualifiers isn't where the tournament is won. So uh, yes, we'll move swiftly on from that, I think. Well, we should say I think that's probably the best we've ever done at these predictions. So um, that either means we're going to nail the World Championship or we're going to come crashing down to earth. <laughs> uh, well, that, it's the kind of expert analysis that you you come to expect from us. I mean, I think you said um, at one point, you said uh, for all the snooker podcasts and all the predictions that were out there, nobody was talking about Mohammed Shahab except us. So yeah, there we were you the go. only one. We're the only one. Only one who mentioned him, and he got a win. So it shows that, and we'd be the only people who mentioned Jensen Kendrick before he qualified. So I'm not saying that we're like the not well, the exactly. of snooker, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. But uh, we we do like to you know talk about a lot of the lower ranked players. That's why we we probably spend a bit longer talking about qualifiers and stuff than than anything else, anybody else out there, because we we, we know all of these players pretty much and, and they all have uh, they all have their little personalities that, that we've created for them and, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> well, if we don't know them when we first read the name, if we don't know them, we do look them up and then 
one of us will come into a future episode and go on, oh, have you heard this about Andy Neck? And the other one will go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jason Tart. Oh, I hope he makes it this year, Jason Tart. <laughs> yeah, it's a cracker. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's get on to the World Championship proper, Tom. So, uh, mm-hmm. sixteen qualifiers. And we said before this, um, everybody at home, we said right, we're going to cap the the qualifiers at ten minutes. I'm now looking at the the clock at thirty thirty minutes. So, unless Tom has done <laughs> some incredible um, editing. <laughs> with all of this then i don't think we've hit our target but um but anyway honest, we will when, we'll move on i don't think there's anything i'll be able to edit out because it was all pretty much us talking about each each round <laughs> so um i mean this episode might there be like go. a a joe o'connor max out frame that's all i'm saying so strap in <laughs> 115 minutes so uh, yeah Go and grab yourself a drink. But uh, yes, uh, we we will get into it, uh, and we'll we'll be making our little predictions along the way. Um, we'll we'll give a, a little bit of score prediction as well, a little bit of context about each match. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll start uh, as we mean to go on with the defending world champion, who will of course uh, probably by the time you're listening to this, have his match underway um, at the Crucible. Mm-hmm. He's the only player that will know if he's through round two or not by the end of day one. Uh, and that's Luca Brassell, and he's taken on mm. David Gilbert. Uh, what are your thoughts about that match? Very, very, very hard to call, because obviously Brassell, defending champion, he's got the Crucible curse hanging over him. Not only that, but <laughs> I was yeah. looking at his season performance this year, and... I think he was ranked in the 40s for the season. Like, I think... I can't remember a champion having a worse follow-up season than Brussels had in terms of ranking events. I think Bingham but, had a similar sort of season, but... I think, yeah, Bingham didn't have a great follow-up season. Um, and maybe Mark Williams didn't either when he won and he was eating kebabs or whatever all the time. But I... I think... <laughs> I don't know, it's because Brassell, I think, was really out of the blue as a winner, whereas at least when Bingham and Mark Williams won, they were off the back of a strong couple of seasons, like winning ranking titles, so it made more sense, whereas Brassell properly was like a Joe Johnson (laughs) surprise. And also, Brassell, where is your version of Everlasting Love? Come on, mate, get in the studio. Bang it out, I want to hear it. But (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Everlasting Love. (laughs) But I don't... I can't, I'm really struggling to call this because David Gilbert's a fantastic player. He's going to have already done more practice in the qualifiers than Brussels probably done all season. <laughs> but I, I think it'll be close. I think it'll be a 10-9 kind of situation. Um, I think Brussels will edge it 10-9. I think this this could be the most important match in the whole tournament. Just as a bit of a, a a bit of a bold claim, um, I think if Luca Brassell beats David Gilbert, I th- it massively opens up the draw for him, and he won't really be playing any anybody that can challenge him in good form until the quarterfinals, which you know by then people are going to be talking about. Well, is he going to go back to back? Is he going to break the Crucible curse? I think. I, I think he could go and do it if he um, if he beats David Gilbert. You know, I think he'll fancy his chances. But there's a big but in there of will he come out on top. Um, but you've gone 10-9, Luca Brassell. I'm going to go 10-6, David Gilbert. Ooh. I mean, yeah, I, I, I do agree. Just to be I out there. Gets, you know. Well, I think if he gets past Gilbert, you know, it, I mean, it would have shades of Joe Johnson, who had never won the Crucible ever, and then suddenly he won it. The next year he got to the final. So Brussel would, I mean, he'd have the confidence yeah. to do it. He's got crazy confidence. Uh, the players we're going to talk about in the next match, I think Brussel and Gilbert could both beat both of them, especially at the Crucible. So as you say, it would really open up, because the next mm. draw, Rob Milkins as the seed against Pang. Uh, Pang played very well against Ronnie last year. Milkins 
over the past two years has played some fantastic snooker, but most of that was two years ago and not this year. And Rob Milkins has got a particularly poor record at the Crucible. Um, so, as much as I'd love to see Milkins finally have a run, like he's never got past round two, I'd love to see him properly get into the later stages. I just, I can't see it. I think Pang will um, will beat him. I think Pang's the kind of player who, a bit like C, I think both Pang, you know, they, they're at the Crucible for the second year in a row. I think they'll both be top 16 at some point and um, I fancy Pang to, to get through mm. to round two what about you? yeah I, I I know a lot of people were backing uh, Pang last year to beat Ronnie and uh, you know he did play very very well and as you say he's going to be more com- comfortable more confident coming into to this season and Rob Milkins He's a very streaky player, and I think that's his his problem at the Crucible, is that in long matches, you can't really afford to just be able to rattle off three, four, five frames in a row and then just go cold, and and that's maybe the the issue of why he's he's maybe not been as successful throughout his career. Like you, I'd love to see him um, go far in this tournament, but... I can't see it either. I think that's got um, qualifier win written all over it. Um, mm. I th- I think at sh- out of everybody, Rob Milkins will probably be quite happy with his draw. He's, he's avoided um, the big, big names like Jack Mazowski and uh, Neil Robertson, for instance, or Stu Bingham, mm-hmm. uh, Ryan Day, Ricky Walden, Hussein Vafai. You know, he's avoided yeah. all of those. Um, so he's at least got a chance but uh, I yeah. think it'll be an entertaining match, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, I've gone Pang. Um, 10-7 I'm going to go for. Ooh. Oh, I didn't say my score. But if I, if I was going for a score, I'd probably go, I think it'd maybe be a 10-8 to, to Pang. Um, and at the very least, it should be a nice attacking game. There's not going to be much safety going on. No, definitely not. Uh, um, speaking of a, a cracking match... Ali Carter versus Stephen Maguire could easily have been... Well, I think it was the mm. semi-final back in 2008, was it? Was it then? I, I don't know. I know he, he played... Um, Stephen Maguire definitely got the semi-finals around about that time. And uh, mm. Ali Carter obviously got the final in yeah. in 2012 um, and t- 2008. So... Uh, I mean, it could quite easily have been a very good <laughs> quarter-final nearly 20 years ago and it's the first yeah. round in 2024 and I I don't know how this is going to go Ali Carter has been pretty good for a couple of seasons but he's also played mm. some really awful snooker recently um, and Stephen Maguire has won two matches in the last week he, he said he was going to go back up to Scotland practice hard work with mm-hmm. John Higgins and I think that that's going to do him the world of good Um I mean, I've gone for two qualifiers so far, but yeah, what what can I do here? I mean, I, I think I'm going to back Ali Carter. I think I think Ali Carter is going to be up for the the world championship, and I'm not sure Stephen Maguire is quite as good as he used to be. But I'm well, going to go ten eight for Ali Carter. You did say in our last episode that you thought this could be the first year where there's more qualifiers winning in the first round than uh, seeds. So I think it makes sense you've done two qualifiers yeah. so far because yeah. it's a very strong bunch. I'm going to agree, though. Yeah. I think Ali Carter will, over 19 frames, have just a bit too much for Maguire. Um, I think it might be like a 10-6 to, to Ali. I think it could be close during one of the sessions, but I think Ali will pull away and um, he's just one of those players who he, you have to drag him off the table at the Crucible, you know, so I think he'll he'll grind out a bit and and get past. Yeah, uh, I, and, and, you know, I know a lot of people will back Ali Carter to uh, at least a, an each way bet. I think, in general, the top half of the draw is very open, actually. Um, you know, obviously, you've got the big name of, of Mark Allen down there. Um, lots of people tipping him for the Worlds this year. But other than that, you've got a lot of players that are just not quite in form or 
um, you know, haven't really got the experience at the Crucible. So I I, I do really think that top half is open. So for somebody like an Ali Carter to go and and, and get go all the way, to be quite honest. Well, yeah, because the other other part of that section, and this is one of these eight will get in the semi-final, and it's Sean Murphy and Luau Haoshan. Um, so you've basically got Brussel, who's a champion, Gilbert Maguire, who've both got to semi-finals. You've got Murphy, who's next champion. You've got Milkins, who's never done much. Pang, who's never won a match at the Crucible. And you just go, one of these is going to get to the semi-final, which um, is incredible, yeah, really. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's open. It's very open, as you say. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it should be three very decent matches um, to, to, you know, get us uh, get us going in this uh, preview. But, yeah, looking forward to all of them. Carter is another one that I could be seeing at the at the Crucible as well, along with uh, the next match, which is uh, Sean Murphy versus Liu Hai Shan. And usually, Sean Murphy... Blitzes through the first round. I remember I said this last year against Seizure. We, I said it could well be a ten nil. And um, Ooh, how wrong was that's I? That's aged well. Um, I, t- I tell you what, Sean Murphy has played really, really well when I've seen him recently. In uh, he played well in China. He played well at Saudi Arabia. Um, mm. But the problem is he didn't qualify for the Players' Championship and he didn't qualify for the, the Tour Championship. So he's he's not played a lot of matches recently, um, which could be a benefit to him. Obviously, he went into last year's World Championship having won two tournaments in quick succession. So mm-hmm. we will see uh, what happens. I think I think Sean Murphy's going to come roaring back to form this, this World Championship. So I'm going to go Sean Murphy, and uh, I'm going to go 10-4, 10-4 for Sean Murphy. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm surprised by that. I mean, I, I am going to also go for Sean, but I think Lou will uh, put up a bit, bit more of a fight. I think it might be a, I'm going to say 10, 10-8, I think. I think it'll be a bit closer than we think. Um, but I mean, okay. we should also say, so you, you might see, is it, Ali, Maguire, Murphy, or Hao Shan. Now, who would you want to see out of those? Not who you predict. Who who would be your dream choice? Um. Well, Murphy and Maguire would be my my dream pick out of those those two. Later on, um, probably Walden and Vafai, just because. You know, I don't, the other player in that uh, definitely don't don't want to see, but um, we'll, we'll oh, see. Oh, poor Tom Ford! Poor Tom Ford! I know, poor Tom Ford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, on to the next one. We have got a Leicester derby, Tom. With uh, Mark Selby versus Joe O'Connor. And uh, Mark Selby hinted at retirement a few weeks ago at the Tour Championship. So, I mean, I don't know how much we believe about that. But um, Joe O'Connor, you know, I can't say he was playing particularly well to get through against Matt Self. It was a bit more of a a grind. Um, The only Crucible debutant as well this year. Yeah, the first time, well, I mean, not the first time, but the, it would have been the first time there was no debutante, uh, but now he's the only one. I think the last time he was, the last time there was only one debutante was possibly Mitchell Mann in about 2016, I think. Um, okay. And I mean, my, wow. my main worry with this match is it could be the longest match in Crucible history because if these two players get bogged down, <laughs> that th- they're not going to care about playing tippy tappy snooker which uh could be could be an issue i do think with it being o'connor's yeah. debut and as the only debutante he might have a few nerves uh especially playing mm. presumably his leicester snooker idol mark selby so i think selby will get the win 
I think it might be a, a bit more comfortable than I've said so far. I think it might be a 10 5. Interesting. I, I've I've gone for a Selby ten three here. So um, Ooh, okay. there always tends to be one quite uh, quite one sided match at the Crucible, and I think somebody like mm. Selby can rattle off a few frames with sentries. And I think if it goes slow, I think it'll be close. Um, yeah, but but we'll, we'll see anyway. Um, but moving on to one of the absolute highlights of the draw for me, uh, Kyron Wilson against Dominic Dale. Now, Wilson has had a horrible season. Mm. You know, he's he, it's very unlike him. He's usually very consistent, um, obviously has a great Crucible record, but he's going into this without any form yeah. at all um, and playing a Dominic Dale who's probably had his best season for for 10 years so well i think I was, this is going to be I, a lot closer than what people might think i looked up dale on q tracker and in terms of purely in terms of prize money this is at the age of 52 the second best season of his career wow uh, that's so crazy he won't he won't be you know, I think a lot of people were expecting Dale to get walked over, but really his form, I think he'll put up a, a good fight here. I think he will, at the very least, be able to sort of go blow for blow for a bit of the match. Whether he can do it for the whole match, I'm not too sure. But, I mean, as you said, Kyron's this season, he's been similar to Brussel, really, in that he's just not really done much most ranking tournaments he's not really turned up so on paper there is an argument to say Dale should be the favourite on, on form which is mad <laughs> that's absolutely mad um, <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think if he gets a good start he, he's he's going to be dangerous but um, I don't know I, I, I th- the thing about Kyron right I think if again it's, a, it's an important match this one because I think if Kyron can can beat Dominic Dale, he could go quite far in the tournament again. Um, you know, especially with some of the players around him in his draw. So I, I'm actually going to go for a decider in this one, 10-9. Um, and I think, I think I'm going to go Kyron Wilson. Wow, okay. Hmm. I'm going to go for a decider as well, just because I've not gone for one, and there has to be some. And this is one of those matches where it is literally like, you know, one player who's in form, one player who's not, and that should balance them out a bit based on their rankings. And I think... I think Dale will win it somehow. I think he'll do some Dale magic. He'll have that glint in his eye. He'll start singing my way, and it'll put Kyren off or something. He'll find a way to win an decider, I think, Dominic Dale. Well, he's got to. He'll give us a few cue the musics for um, for the rest <laughs> of the championship. But uh, yeah, um, interesting. That you, you, you've gone Dale there. Uh, anyway, on to the next one: John Higgins versus. Go on, sorry. I'm just doing my predictions. I'm, I'm writing them on my phone at the moment, and I've just put Dale in. And in my head, I've just you know when you write something down and immediately you look at it and go, "What have I done?" But I'm sticking with it. I'm <laughs> sticking with it. If it if this comes off and Dale does win, I look like a genius. You will, you will. I, I honestly, I was very close to putting Dale, but I think most other players um, he, he came up against, I would have probably backed him. But I think Kyron has just got something about him at the Crucible, so I'm um, I, I, I'm I'm going to back him. Um, but anyway, we've got John Higgins versus Neil Robertson's conqueror. Jamie Jones. Uh, I, I, t- I tell you what, that's a tough opening round for for John Higgins, who has had a very consistent mm. season. I think he's reached five semi-finals, but uh, hasn't hasn't won a, a trophy since the Players Championship twenty twenty one. I think so. Long time ago. What I was I was surprised to see is that John's reached five semi-finals, but if he doesn't win this. He'll be out of the top 16 for the first time in 
30 years. And uh, I found that quite surprising considering the semi-finals, but I guess he's probably not got to the semi-finals or the finals of the bigger events and that's that's harmed him. And mm. it is, you know, the, the Crucible is a lot of prize money at the stake and he needs to win here to stay in the top 16. And it would be pretty huge, I think, if he drops out because... No one's been in the top sixteen yeah. consistently. Long well, it must be has. the longest unbroken streak in the top sixteen ever. It must be. Yeah, I think it. I mean, yeah, because unless Davis was in the top sixteen for ages, but I don't think was he still. In but the top he dropped 16? out around about two thousand, I think. Okay, well, yeah, I think it must be, and I, I reckon it is. Do you know what I mean? I think I've. I've probably read that some day it's the longest streak because obviously yeah. Ronnie dropped out when he took a year yeah. off. Mark's been in and out. Um, yeah. You know, players like Robertson have just dropped out finally. And so I think it would be the end of the longest streak. So uh, he's got a lot to play for, Higgins. And Jamie Jones has already beat one yeah. strong favourite. So it's this is, mm. I think this is the hardest mm. one for me to call so far. I, I'm not, I'm going to let you go first, Jeff, because I, I can't, I can't decide. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm still thinking about Davis. Uh, I think he did get back into uh, back into the top sixteen, but uh, he d- he definitely dropped out of it because I remember he didn't qualify for the 2001 World Championship or something. That was the first time he hadn't been there for, oh, okay. for so he must have been out of the top sixteen at that point. But um, Robertson as as well, he did drop out a few years ago because he missed the Masters. Uh, yeah. So it's not the first time for him. Somebody like Ding, he he's dropped out a lot. Um, Selby's probably mm. got a fairly long streak going, but it, it's nowhere near thirty years. So that's a no. that's a big thing. I, I'm going to back Higgins in this one. I think he's got a lot on the line here. Um, I do think if Higgins loses, it might be his last ever match. Um, but if he no. if he wins. Do you think? Um, I think he'll keep going ten six. Uh, I'm going ten six, but yeah, I, I think it could be his swan song if he loses. I, hmm. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna back Higgins again. I think ten eight, uh, just because it's the Crucible, it's longer formats. Higgins hasn't played his best snooker this season, but he's got time to sort of warm up into the match and at the crucible it's really really hard to go against any of the class of 92 just because their uh their experience and what they've done before and i just think higgins mm-hmm. will uh it'll be one of those things where everyone's gonna go he might drop out the 16 he might drop out the 16 and then he could get to the semi-finals and we'd all go oh no he's fine for another two years <laughs> so um i i fancy higgins to, to be yeah. jamie jones yeah 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 yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, Higgins is is who uh, we've gone for there. Uh, ended off the, the top half of the draw, uh, we have Mark Allen versus Robbie Williams. And um, I know Mark Allen is uh, a huge tip for lots of people this year to, to go and win the World Championship. What, what do you think about that, Tom? I think he's got a shot. I think he's definitely got a shot. As we said earlier, he's the... Uh, provisional number one in the world rankings, which shows how well he's done over the past two years. Uh, I think he's currently ranked number three. He's definitely um, the best form of his life. Do you know what I mean? Like, definitely, I think he yeah, has yeah. to be in the in the top three or four for most people in terms of the favourites. And um, mm. you know, I. I certainly can't see him having any problem with Robbie Williams. I I think this could be no a thrashing to 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 be honest. No disrespect to Robbie, but just in the fact that Robbie's never won a match at the Crucible, you're against one of the big top sixteen. You know the top four or top three at the very least are yeah you know in incredible form, and uh, I think Robbie's been a bit unlucky with the draw. You know, if Robbie was against uh, a Milkins or something, he could have a shot. But I think Alan will win this 10-3. Wow. I've uh, gone 10-4. So, um, there you go. But yeah, I agree with you. Can't see uh, Robbie Williams uh, 
providing much much threat um, if I'm honest Okay, uh, on to the second half of the draw, starting with uh, perhaps the favourite for the tournament. Um, obviously won five events this season already, um, mm. none of which are, are, are huge events, I will add as, as the ca- caveat to that. Um, Judd Trump, who has very much come back to form this season, he's played very well uh, in spells, but he's also... A bit like Ali Carter, he's also played absolutely awful in certain events um, and certain matches, big matches, particularly against Ronnie, weirdly. Um, mm. But, uh, yeah, he's taken on Jose and Vafai, who, of course, probably made the biggest headlines of anybody last year, uh, mm. other than Brussel himself. So <laughs> uh, how, do, how do you see that one going? I think, I think Judd Trump will be uh, not necessarily terrified, but... I think he would. There's probably not another player in the the draw that he would have, you know, n- not rather played against. I'll say Vafai is a a top sixteen player, really. So hmm. could be an upset. Yeah. No, I think Judd will be. You know, I think the two people Judd would want to avoid would be Hossein and his good mate Jack. And I think drawing Hossein. Hmm. Is uh, a really tough draw for Judd. Tough draw for Hossein as well. Of course, Judd's had a great season, but as you said, they've not been in the top tier events. There's a lot of him winning best of sevens. It's not the same as uh, the Crucible. Also, Judd did win. I think he won three titles in a row, but that was back in something like September to October. So that was very early in the season to have that form and Mm. whether he timed it badly to have the form that early in the season possibly i'm gonna say i actually think well he's come out again and and said he's not bothered by that he's not bothered about i think stephen henry had him on his channel recently and said um you know would would you trade the five tournaments you've won to win the world championship and he said no i'd rather win the five events so no, he's lying. The he's World Championship lying. does not mean... Well, I, well, I don't know. I, I just don't know if the World Championship means as much to him as it does to other players. I'm quite sure the World Championship would be more prize money than his five tournaments for a start. Like, um, <laughs> and yeah. I think... Yeah, They're very true. I think those are the words of a man who's only won World Champi- one World Championship and... You know, twenty-seven or other ranking titles, whatever it is. I think that's why he's saying it. But um, you know, the reality is, I think his career will be judged on majors, on triple crown events, and uh, people probably think he should have won more by now. And I think he will once again not win this year. I think uh, everyone's building it up to be, or it could be Trump against Rooney in the semis. But I really think. Possein is a classy, classy act, and it'll be close. I, I'm, you know, you'd be stupid to say it's not going to be close. I, but I think Possein ten nine. That's what I'm going for. Ten nine. Oh, can you imagine? Mm. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> oh, ten nine on the black. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> You know me. I mean, I, I I'm gonna back Hussein um, all the way uh, in this match. Uh, I've gone ten eight because I I, mm-hmm. I just think Judd is a bit of a slow start at the tournaments, and I think mm. I think if again it's an important match. If he gets through it, it really opens up for him. You know, until perhaps a quarter final mm-hmm. against Mark Williams, I don't see him being particularly challenged challenged uh, and that's only if mark williams makes yeah. it through so um mm. you know uh, it's a big match for the tournament um but yeah i think hossein will will have a bit of extra fire in his belly this this time round because of what happened last year and he'd made a bit of a fool of himself and he'll he'll want to prove that he's not that person that he's somebody that should you know get the the adoration of the crowd because he was getting it last year he was playing incredible snooker in round one and then 
he let his mouth run um, in the interviews and mm. lost a hell of a lot of respect, which I think it'll take time to, to win back. But what better way to do it than beat Judd Trump in the first round? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's a, he has a shot. And I'd, I'd love, you know, we'd both love to see it. And it might be, there's probably been so many times on this podcast where we've gone against Trump because we're not fans. And it's come back to bite us. So it's good going back to bite us. Well, we again, we but... we backed McGill last year. I think was it McGill last year. I think McGill beat him, mm. didn't he? Or was it? Well, mm. no, I don't think it. Yeah, no, it was. I swear it was. Okay, yeah, maybe we maybe he did. So I'm sure McGill yeah, beat I him think... last year. You know, I think yeah, Hossein. I hope he does as well. It'd be lovely to see because um, I, I do like Hossein. I really liked him uh, before. He'd even qualified for the championships because in interviews he always seemed very warm, very friendly. He'd always go like, they'd go, "Oh, how's saying? How do you think that match has gone?" And he'd always say, "Oh, I just want to say hello to the snooker fans. Thank you for supporting me." And I was like, "Oh, he's a nice lad." And he did kind of just get yeah, carried yeah. away last year. I think he he tried to play mind games and it backfired. Um, so, as you say, he needs to sort of rebuild his reputation a bit, and I hope he. You can do that with a good mm. run this year. Mm. Yeah, I, I think you'll be well, well up for it. Um, just to confirm, Anthony McGill did beat Judd Trump in the first round last year, 10-6. Um, so there you go. Wow. Uh, but anyway, on to the next one. And uh, this is, you know, a, a match that's probably going to be forgetting about in, in the draw, but I think could go very, very close. Um Tom Ford, who's had the best season of his life, somehow in the top 16. He's not won a ranking tournament, but that shows the consistency yeah. that he's had. Um, and he's taken on, you know, as we've said, my my second favourite player on the tour, uh, Ricky Walden, who I'm still uh, got big memories of that Crucible semi-final run um, many, many years ago when he was well ahead against Barry Hawkins. But... Uh, but lost in the end, and uh, I, again, this this could be a, a qualifier win. It, it's got it written all over it, I think. But do you think Tom Ford can can get through? Well, Tom Ford's are one of a few of the seeds, you know, like Milkins, and then like Zhang Ander, who's coming up, who have never been a seed before and I always feel like when it's your first time as a seed that's a that's a unique kind of pressure because you're not used to it you've never been Mm. the favourite in a crucible Mm. match before probably so I think that actually puts a bit more pressure on the uh, the first time seeds especially because Walden's had two or three matches to warm up he's used to best of 19s Um, I mean on paper Tom Ford is the favourite, and he's had a fantastic season. You know, in the mm. top sixteen for the first time at the age of forty, he almost got into the Masters. Um, but it is tricky. I, I don't think it'll be as simple as people think. Um, and I'm going to go for for Tom Ford. You know, I think I think in most tournaments. I would probably have gone for Ricky Walden. But I just think the fact he's had such a good season and also the fact he's a seed might hopefully give Tim, Tom Ford a bit of confidence. And he's the kind of player I think if he's confident, he can play brilliant mm. snooker. So I, I fancy Tom Ford to, to mm. win maybe yeah. uh, maybe 10-7 10, 10 I'm going to go. Okay. Um, just to remind people at home, in case they uh, they weren't aware, Ricky Walden lost to ten nine in the first round last year to uh, Tom Ford. No, Luca Brassell, oh. who of course <laughs> went on to win the world championship. So you know, well, it's like I think the year that. Judd won the world championship. He beat he beat Chris Wakelin like ten nine in the first round or something like that. It was very close, and people yeah. always forget this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It shows. Yeah, I think how competitive the world championships is. That literally, that we can make all these predictions, but that's not to say 
Like the final couldn't be, <laughs> you know, a Robbie Williams or, a, you know, a Rob Milkins. They've got a shot. The fact they're in the last 32, if they turn up and have the form of their life, any of these players could do something incredible. So, um, yeah. It's crazy, really. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. Um, we have Zhang Ander uh, versus Jack Jones. And again, uh, another sort of seeded debut, um, if you like, mm-hmm. for Zhang Ander. He's had a very good season. Um, got the semi final. Was it the Players' Championship he got the semi final of? He's uh, obviously won the International Championship. Um, playing Jack Jones, who got the quarter final last year. So, again, could be a mouth watering clash this one. The mad thing about Jay Ander is, I believe I'm right in saying this was his first ever season that he started it in the top 64. And he's been on tour for like over 10 years. He's never yeah. been a top 64 player. And just this season, he's found something. He's, he's exploded. He's turned into this fantastic player. Like, Number three on the season rankings, Zhang Ander, which is kind of mind blowing when you think <laughs> yeah. he was he yeah. was ranked sixty three at the start of the season. So he's he's had this incredible incredible run this year. Um, but Jack Jones last year, I think him and C were the best two crucible debuts that I've I've probably seen since. Uh, well, at least the last 10 years, do you know what I mean? It was a real, like, God, debutant, very rarely yeah, yeah. this good. But they yeah. both were fantastic. So, um, mm. both unlucky, really, to be in this same uh, this same group, really, because they might draw each other in the <laughs> second round. You kind of feel a bit bad for them. I think Jack got to the quarterfinals and it got to the... Uh, no, sorry, C got to the semis, and now they're going to meet possibly in the second round. But that's, that's the World Championships. Um, I do think because of his form... I think I'm going to have to go for Zhang Ander. It, again, he might have some nerves of being a seed, but I think he did do all right at the Masters. I think it was his first time in the Masters, and he played all right. So I'm going to go for Zhang Ander. I'll tell you what might help. Mm. Go on. You, you you give me a score prediction, then I'll tell you what might help. I was worried you were going to go, i tell you what might help, but uh, I've got an email from Liang Wenbo, and I've got a real feeling it could be... <laughs> 10-5 or, or something crazy like that. Um, I'm going to go Zhang Ander. 10-7. Yeah, I'm going to go 10-7 as well. Um, I mean, what, uh, what I think will help Zhang Ander is that he's out first up um, tomorrow on the other side mm. of Luca Brussel, so a little bit less of the limelight, if you like. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that that will that will help him. Um, but yeah, I'm going ten seven. But it could go either way. That one really could, because uh, Jack Jones could quite easily have been in Jang Anders position had yeah. the stars aligned differently. So um, yeah. Anyway, on to the next one. Another heavily tipped uh, name for the. World Championship, Mark Williams, and he's playing C. C. Jarwe. I, yeah. I feel very sorry for C, actually. Um, Massively. Because Massively. I think he'd have fancied another good run in the tournament. But um, Mark Williams, I mean, hey, I, I was there in the, uh, at the Tour Championship and Ronnie didn't get a chance in that second session, um, really. Mark Williams played awesome. And I think yeah. if he plays anything like that in the first round, I mean, he was almost unstoppable in the whole tournament of the Tour Championship. So mm-hmm. I, I can't look ahead, you know, other than Mark Williams for that one. Yeah, I, I agree. I think C was very unlucky with the draw because, you know, he did so well last season. He would have fancied another good run. If he was, you know, swapping places with uh, a Ricky Walden or something like that, he would have, you know, probably had a much better chance of doing something. But just because how well Mark played, like that's, you know, I'd say that is up there with the 
2018 World Championship with the best I've seen Willow play um, in a in a final. It was just incredible. Yeah. So I really do think that uh, Mark Williams will have too much. I think it could be a bit of a, a maybe like a ten five. I think it's one where people will be thinking it's going to be really close, but if Willow gets on the run, he mm. could kind of intimidate C a bit and. Uh, it yeah. could be it could be a, a big win for Willow, and I'd love to, I'd and we'd all love to see Mark Williams go on another good run. He's always one of the best players to watch. He's always one of the proper characters that we always love seeing. So, um, you know, fingers crossed he he can do it. Yeah, uh, I've went ten six as well um, for Mark Williams. So very similar score prediction. Um, yeah, I, I just think he's he's due a, a big run in the World Championship, actually. So, yeah, looking forward to, to seeing that. Um, on to perhaps the tie of the round, but uh, mm-hmm. I think I said this in my little preview video. The next three matches are, are, are crackers. <laughs> looking at mm-hmm. this, uh, starting yeah. off with Ding Junhui against uh, Jack Lazowski. Uh, Ding, perhaps the, the best player to have never won the world championship um and he's taken on perhaps the best player to never win a ranking event um mm. so far jack lazowski so yeah. this this is a very interesting encounter and i know uh, jack lazowski has, has taken a, a lot of inspiration from luca brussel last uh, his victory last year and he fancies that he can do something similar um mm. but i think he would have been gutted seeing that he was drawn against ding uh, in the in yeah. the first round, I think that's a very very tough match for him. But uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on this? I think it could be a very close match. I think either of them could um, potentially get to at least the quarterfinals if they win here. Mm. I think Ding has had a bit of a resurgence, and it's kind of gone under the radar because we're so used to him being really high up the rankings, but he did drop out for a bit, but then he's kind of got back into it and, you know, he's played some very, very good stuff. There was a match against Mark Williams uh, last year. I think it was in the UK Championship semi-final and they both were playing excellently. Like It was a real proper tactical battle and it was incredible and it did feel like Ding was back to close to his best. Like, not in terms of winning titles, but in terms of, like, Oh, he's playing. He's playing this year. So I do think Ding yeah. will have just a bit too much. As much as I'd love to see Jack actually win something. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I feel like he's played so well mm. and it feels like in a different in a different era he'd be a multiple world champion by now. But he's just in a very competitive era. <laughs> um I think Ding will have too much for him. I think it'll be a ten yeah. seven. But there'll be plenty of centuries by okay. both players, probably. Yeah. Uh, no, I think it'll be an entertaining match. Um, I've actually gone 10-7 the other way. I have uh, oh. I think Ding's got a bit of a, a dodgy record at the Crucible. Um, and I think, I think Jack played very, very well in the qualifiers. And mm. I think he's going to be one to watch. A- again, he's on the wrong half of the draw, really, to do much damage um i think if he was in the top half he could have been in each way bet to to, to get to the final um but yeah I, i'm i'm gonna back back jack lazowski uh, in that one 10 7 but uh, i think it'll be an entertaining one anyway yeah uh, next up, we've got uh, Gary Wilson having his best ever season. Obviously, won two titles, got the semi-final mm-hmm. of the Tour Championship as well. He's he's flying as Gary Wilson, um, and he's playing somebody that, in, in other years, you would say is is a, a tough draw um, in Stuart Bingham. But as we've already alluded to, he's not he's not playing well at the moment, unfortunately, Stuart Bingham, and uh, mm-hmm. and Gary will be quite content with that. Yeah, in in terms of Bingham, I mean, I'm in two minds. I think either he will somehow find something because it's the Crucible, and you know we'll be talking in a couple of weeks, and he would have knocked in ten centuries, and he will be in the quarterfinal and would have will be playing brilliantly. Or, and sadly, I think this is more likely this season. I think he could struggle a bit, and Gary Wilson might 
just win relatively comfortably. I th- I I think Gary Wilson could win this ten six, and uh, I'd love to be wrong because I love mm. Bingham, but if I back Wilson, that means I'll be happy yeah. either way. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. No, a uh, similar story for me, really. Um, as you know, I'd I'd love Bingham to 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 win that. Um, I'd love Bingham to have a, a good run in the tournament. Um, but yeah, he, he's there's a lot of players he could have come up against that are struggling for form, and they they could have both found form. I just don't think he'll be allowed to do that against Gary Wilson. Um, I know Gary's very very confident. He's he's gonna he's gonna really think he's possibly for the first time in his career that he's got a chance of winning the world championship. So, yeah. you know, well, I, the, I gonna, <laughs> there's got to be something gonna, in that. So I'm going to go Wilson 10-5. You know, I was going to say, I, we're not doing our second round predictions today, but I think when I do my full prediction, I think there's a chance I'll, I'd put Gary Wilson to beat Ding or Jack. So I, I think, um, you know, if then he gets past Ronnie, then, hey, you he, he fancy himself to to win it. So, you know, he's got to the semi-finals before. Very unlucky not to make the final, but he did. And he's had a great season. Mm. Well, the we'll, side terror. We'll see about those predictions, Tom, because I've I've got a surprise for you in about five minutes. Once we've uh, got to the end of the oh, uh, no. end of these matches. Oh no! What yes. is it? What? So oh, we're uh, going to predict every round. Is this going to be like a five-hour <laughs> special? No, no, no. It's going to be quick fire from round two onwards. It's going to be one okay. word. One word. <laughs> That's it. One word predictions. Um, so anyway, uh, penultimate round is Barry Hawkins versus Ryan Day. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> probably the closest rankings of uh, any of the rounds, actually, because Barry Hawkins is mm-hmm. ranked 15, I believe, and Ryan Day is ranked 17 or, or 18, something like that. So they're, they're very, very close in the world rankings. So in theory, this should be a very close match. But um, Hawkins has sort of come back to, to some good form this season. Um, mm-hmm. Jet tends to go very well at the Crucible, so... I'm inclined to to go for a Barry Hawkins uh, victory here, and uh, maybe uh, a quite comfortable uh, victory for me of ten uh, six. Mm, well, Ryan Day, that, that as you said, like on the on the provisional end of season rankings, if Higgins does lose and drop out the top sixteen, I believe Ryan Day would be sixteenth. So. It pretty much could be like rank fifteen against rank sixteen, so really, um, it could go either way. But I do agree, just because the hawk at the crucible, he's um, he's got the experience. Do you know what I mean? And I, I, I think, yeah, yeah, he has, yeah. Mm, do you know what? Maybe. Do you know what? I was gonna go for the hawk because he's got the experience, but. I think Ryan Day could uh, pull out a shock, you know. I think um, he wasn't the most convincing in the qualifiers, Ryan Day. But, you know, he's going to be pretty happy with Barry Hawkins as a draw, ranking-wise. You know, it's not he's not against Williams. He's not against uh, Trump. So I think he might be able to find something. And possibly it could be another decider. I'm thinking another 10-9 to uh, Ryan Day. Oh wow, that'll be a, that'll be a great match. Uh, the only thing I would say about Ryan Day is he'll probably look ahead in the draw and think, well, even if I win this match, I'm probably not going to win the next match, and that's what I sort of, I, that's how I feel about it. Um, but it'll be good to see Ryan Day have a bit of a run because I do like him. He, he's a, a he's a good attacking player. So um, yeah, will be interesting. But uh, anyway, we have got to. The final uh, round of, uh, or final fixture of round one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, of course, won UK Championship, won the Masters, going for the Triple mm-hmm. Crown in a season. Um, also won the uh, World Grand Prix, the uh, Saudi Arabian uh, Masters, and the Shanghai Masters this season. So he's won five tournaments, got to the final of the Tour Championship, Um very well fancied for winning number eight. Um, he's taken on Jackson Page, who 
he came through um, qualifying uh, for the second time. Obviously, he beat... Um, I can't remember who he beat a, f- a few years ago, but then famously played Mark Williams in the, the second round, I, I think it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And got absolutely and got, hammered, I seem to remember. He got trout, which makes me worried for him here, to be yeah. honest. Because he, uh, yeah. he looked all right in the first round that time, and then Williams was like 13-3 or 13-2. It was incredibly one-sided, yeah. and... <coughs> It depends how quickly Ronnie starts and how much Ronnie cares about ending it quickly. Mm. <laughs> really, you know, I think I think Ronnie mm. could. What are you gonna say? No, no, I wasn't. Go on. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna come back, come in with one of your secret tidbits, but um, I'm gonna go Ronnie ten four. That's what I think, and. Mm. You know, I know everyone makes Ronnie favour every season, but when you look at the part of the draw he's in, I think the only player mm. that he'd be afraid of is Gary Wilson. I think the rest of them in that in that part of the draw, he should be through to the semi-finals. I think that's a, a very um, a very good. Uh, a very good point actually about you know who we might be uh, afraid of and yeah uh, yeah I, I've gone Ronnie ten four as well so mm-hmm. yeah we will we'll see um, obviously it's there's all shocks isn't there um, and I, I've seen a lot of people in my preview video back in Jackson Page um I, I I just can't see it myself but uh, yeah 10 for Ronnie so um yeah we will see what happens but uh yeah let us know your crucible predictions down in the comments we we do enjoy <laughs> reading those every single year and seeing how many you get right um I think we're doing actually reasonably well for time considering <laughs> what we thought this might be um so thank you very much for for listening to us so far we are gonna have a little quick fire round here um and see if we can get all the way to the final so that you, you know at the start of this championship you're getting the who we think is gonna win out of it so um <laughs> I'm going to go with you first, Tom. Um, and your uh, first last 16 would be Brussel versus Pang. So who would you be backing in that one? Well, I think if, you know, I, I, I agree with what you said, if, um, you know, Gilbert could win the first round. But I, I, I agree with when you said that if Brazil got through, he could go on a bit of a run. I think Brazil will beat Pang. Okay. So, Brazil, we've got it. Um, Carter versus Murphy. Mm. Carter. I'm going to go for Carter. Okay. Uh, Selby versus Dominic Dale. Uh, I mean, it'd be I'd feel like a lunatic if I didn't go for Selby because, like, Dale is a very good player, but tactically, I think Selby can can tie most players who aren't in the top sixteen in knots. So yeah, I'd go for Selby. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> Higgins or Mark Allen? I feel like they're playing each other a lot recently. Mm. Oh, that's a toughie. But, I mean, just based on, you know, based on experience and previous achievements, you'd go for Higgins. But I think based on this season, I'm going to go for Allen. I think just his his form is, uh, this could finally be his time where he, he puts it together. Okay. Um, Vafai or Ford? Mm. Vafai. Let's go for Vafai. If, I mean, if he beats Trump, he'd be Ooh. even more confident than ever. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zhang Ander or Mark Williams? Williams. Pretty, pretty confident that. Yeah. 
I fancy. Uh, I, I fancied. Um, I think the two the two players I fancied to do well, Williams and Ronnie. Sorry, it's supposed to be quick fire. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Ding versus um, Gary Wilson. Wilson. Okay, and uh, Ryan Day versus Ronnie. Ronnie. Very good. Right. Okay. I'm going to zip through mine. So I had Gilbert to win the uh, first match. So uh, Gilbert versus Pang. I'm going to go Pang uh, to get the quarterfinals. We always have a, a bit of a shock that gets to the quarters, I find. So that's going to be my shock. Well, yeah, uh, Carter versus Murphy. Lost, yeah. I'm going to go Murphy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go Murphy. Um, then Selby versus Kyron. I'm going to go Kyron. Kyron Wilson. Uh, Higgins versus Allen. I agree with you, Mark. Allen, I think it could be his time. It really could be. Um, Vafai versus Walden. Got a, I've got to back Ricky. Ricky Walden. Um, Zhang Ander versus Mark Williams. Uh, Williams, definitely. Uh, Lazowski versus Gary Wilson. Oh, that's, that's a tough one. Um, but again, I think I'm going to go for Gary Wilson and a repeat of the Tour Championship semi-final against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Okay, into the quarterfinals then, Tom. Uh, so you've got mm-hmm. Brussel versus Carter in your first quarterfinal. Carter. Okay. Um, you've then got uh, Selby versus Mark Allen in a repeat of last year's semi final. Mm, Allen. I'm back in Allen. That's back Allen. Okay. Then you've got Vafai against Williams. Williams. And uh, Gary Wilson versus Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie. Wow. <laughs> that is quite the semi final lineup. Carter, Allen, Williams, Ronnie. Wow. Um, okay, right. So I've got Pang versus Murphy. I'm going to go for Murphy. Um, how has Murphy got to the semis in, in, my, in my world? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kyron Wilson. <laughs> versus Mark Allen. Again, I'm going to back uh, Mark Allen. Um, Ricky Walden versus Mark Williams. Uh, That is going to be Mark Williams. And Wilson versus Ronnie. I wouldn't be surprised if Wilson beats Ronnie. It feels like the sort Mm. of thing that would happen. You know, when he's lost against Mm. Hawkins in the past, he lost against uh, McGill a few years ago, lost against Brussel last year. It feels very, very much like the banana skin for Ronnie is that match. Mm. I think if he beats Gary Wilson in the quarters, that's it. I don't think any Anybody else can beat him from there. But Gary Wilson is the one to keep an eye on, in in my opinion, in this tournament. So, yeah. Um, anyway, into your semi-finals first, Tom. You've got the first semi-finals. Uh, so you've got um, Ali Carter versus Mark Allen. Mark Allen. Oh, he's okay. Gonna let, he's gonna let and me down. in I your swear, second I swear semi-final, I've him before and he messes up, but there we go. <laughs> uh, and in your second semi-final, you've got Ronnie O'Sullivan versus Mark Williams. Just because it's the crucible, Ronnie. Yeah. Um, so okay Um, interesting what your final is I've got Murphy versus Mark Allen in the semi-final Mm -hmm. I think that that would be a cracking match actually Um, yeah I worry that Mark Allen is going to bottle it once he gets towards the semi-final stage and I think by then Murphy will be fist pumping he'll be he'll be really pumped up and he's due a run to the world final he does it every few years doesn't he uh sean murphy <laughs> he won't win it but uh he'll get to the final <laughs> sean murphy's in the final um somehow wow. i don't know how he could easily lose in the first round <laughs> uh, no idea but he's in the final right mm-hmm. he doesn't know himself he's like i was booked in to do full commentary of the final and now i'm playing in it um <laughs> and I think Ronnie is going to beat Mark Williams 17-16 in a deciding frame. 
in the semi-final. So there you go. Um, and then the final is all that's left to say, Tom. So you've got uh, Mark Allen versus Ronnie O'Sullivan, World Championship final, best of 35, uh, history on the I line. Mean- before that, though, my favourite quote of this episode was you saying, how has Sean Murphy got to the <laughs> semi-final in my world? And then you've put him through to the final in your world. <laughs> <laughs> Just every time I see his name, I'm like, yes, he's going to win. He's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything he enters. So if he entered, like, uh, Celebrity Big Brother, you'd be like, yeah, Sean Murphy, I've seen his name, he's going to win. This is either going to be a genius move back in Sean Murphy or it's going to really fall flat on on my face, but, you know. Well, I mean, just because I have backed Ronnie, I believe in both the Masters and the UK, and he won them both this season. So I have to back him again. I have to back him to finally achieve what he deserves, and that is the, 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 uh, the season Triple Crown. I think the fact he's not done that it would just be the thing that would really solidify him as, you know, the most exceptional player the game has seen. He's already had the best season of his career in terms of prize yeah. money. He's won two majors. Um, and often with Ronnie, people say, is he going to be up for it? And I think he's going to be hella up for it this year. So I think he'll beat Mark Allen. And I think it'll yeah. be... Uh, he'll win by about five frames. I think it'll be fairly close, but he'll he'll do his classic thing of it being quite close, and then he'll just re- reel off the last five and just out of nowhere, it go God, he's just found it. Mm. So I think he might do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I've got Ronnie versus Murphy, and I mean, can you imagine that as a final? Because well, uh, they don't particularly like each other, do they? Um, <laughs> no, they don't. So no. that would uh, that would be an interesting one. Um yeah, I think I think Ronnie will win that 18-9, 18-10. Um Ooh, Murphy's got a horrible like record s- against Ronnie. But I don't uh, like you saying this, Joe. I don't like you saying it, because you have not backed Ronnie this season. Because He's I haven't well. backed him in the UK or the Masters, have I? I'm worried yeah. that now you've backed him that Sean Murphy's gonna beat him in a decider. <laughs> well, uh, hey, if Sean Murphy beat Ronnie in a decider in this world championship, I think we'll have had a flipping good world championship, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think. I think we'd have a, another naked press conference. First decider since 2002. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Oh dear. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, there you have it then. There is our crucible predictions uh, for the first yeah. first round and, and beyond. Um, unsurprisingly, we've both backed Ronnie O'Sullivan. You know, we're both Ronnie O'Sullivan fans, but genuinely, I, I, you know, looking at all those matches, I, I, I can't see another result. It, the only, you know, spanner in the works, I suppose, is if somebody like Mark Selby gets through the final, John Higgins gets through. Um, mm. You know, maybe um, Judd Trump gets through the semi-final. You know, th- those are the... The potential banana skins for me, I think, particularly Gary Wilson and Mark Williams, they are going to be big challenges for Ronnie um, in a, in our universe, if you like. But um, yeah, it'll be it'll be good. But seventeen days, um, it's it's going to be interesting, and we will find out, uh, you know, in just over two weeks, Tom, whether we are correct in our predictions and uh, um, <laughs> we will see who comes out on top I, I have a I have a feeling that perhaps uh, Sean Murphy is going to let me down but um, <laughs> I'm really hoping that I'm proved wrong I mean yeah I I you never know. That's the thing. We never know of the world championships. You know, no one, no one would have predicted Sean Murphy in two thousand and five. So, you never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> there we go. I mean, I mean, have we? Uh, oh, we've almost done the. What was it? Two hundred eight minutes. Was that the? 
Is that the uh, the frame Joe O'Connor and two hundred and eight? How much? How many? No, how, how, it no, was, was uh, one hundred and fifteen, I think. Okay. Well, so far we're on one hundred and fifteen, which is recording. about what? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, yeah, they were almost two hours. Well, there we go. We have. We've managed to predict the entire World Championship and sum up the qualifiers in a shorter time than they played a frame. So I think that's quite an achievement, Joe. I agree, especially with the depth we've talked about uh, a lot of the players and uh, some of the names we've pulled out of the hat. Even Jason Tart was mentioned in this episode, Tom. <laughs> you know that, That's what people come for um, with these I podcasts. So, but it's yeah. a pleasure as always. Uh, looking forward to some slightly shorter videos um, throughout the, the yeah. World Championship, sort of rounding up the, the day's play. And, um, I can't wait for you to laugh at me when Sean Murphy inevitably loses to Liu Haishan in... Uh, in the first round I'm looking forward to that if that happens Joe literally I don't care if my prediction's wrong I just would love to see <laughs> your face when you've backed Sean Murphy to get all the way to the final and he crashes out and he's back commentating and everyone once again is going why are you commentating he's going well I enjoy it and and you're still going because I think most I think a lot of the times this podcast you've always said I want Sean Murphy to commentate and do well to prove everyone wrong and he's not done it <laughs> he's not done yeah it. yeah <laughs> he's 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 not done it i'm afraid yeah but um but what one thing to to leave you with tom um a, a nugget of information on the bbc sport website um there is an article and uh, mm-hmm. the title of the article is what is snooker question mark okay <laughs> <laughs> what is snooker? Rules, points, colours, and setup explained. Well, there we go. I mean, if, <laughs> if you need to read that article, you're probably listening to the wrong podcast, to be honest, because I imagine this is all gone over your head. I mean, what I love, Tom, is that actually in this article, um, they've got a section about what is the misrule. <laughs> It's a fair point, Joe. What is the misrule? What does it mean? I mean, I mean, this is ridiculous. They've got the balls, right? And and you know we like talking about the balls on this uh, podcast, particularly <laughs> when they come to either Stu Bingham's balls or uh, Chris Henry's balls as well. Mm-hmm. Um, which, by the way, at the at the merchandise shop at the Tour Championship, the balls were still there by uh, Chris Henry. Um, I also was the, uh, Tom, was the copy of World Snooker can... still there? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. <gasps> it, somebody's Someone's bought, bought it, it clearly. Um, and I do need to give it. a shout out to Aidan actually, who uh, who um, came and came up to me at the Tour Championships and said he was a big fan of the podcast. We will give you a proper shout-out throughout the World Championships, but, um, yeah, I haven't forgotten. It was great to speak to you, um, and obviously if anybody sees me at the Crucible next Saturday, please feel free to, to, to come up and, and, and have a chat. It was great. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. But, uh, yeah, the balls on uh, the BBC website. Snooker balls are slightly smaller than balls used in pool. A set for the most popular variant of pool, often known as eight ball, includes 16 balls. One white, one black, seven coloured balls, seven striped balls. Every ball has a number from one to 15, the black taking the eight. Why are they talking about pool? No, I don't know. But what were you, did you say you picked up something from the uh, the the championship? Were you going to show me something? I have, Tom. I'm I'm going to try and zoom out my uh, camera a little bit. I, it's not it's not quite working for some reason. But uh, imagine if you zoomed out and just all I'm this not. time you had the real Stuart Biggin behind you. <laughs> Look up there, Tom. <gasps> Ooh. Can you see up there? Hold on, I need to, I need to zoom. It's a Is signed it? Dennis Taylor <gasps> picture. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love you've got a signed Dennis Taylor picture, a picture of a photo of James Bond, and then Stuart Bingham. <laughs> what other house in the world has that? <laughs> 
Exactly. And and who else has Stuart Bingham's balls on display in front of the Premier League logo? You know. <laughs> That but anyway, um, we're, we're doing what we always do and going on tangents. And if we're not careful, we will end up uh, surpassing Joel Connor's uh, final frame. So I'll let you wrap it up, Tom. OK, well, thank you guys very much for tuning in and listening. This is, of course, our big preview one, but we will see you. I mean, pretty much every day we're going to there's going to be something out from uh, either one of us or both of us There's going to be. A ton of content. We're going to try and do sort of daily um, recaps or updates or opinion kind of things each day. Um, as Joe said, we might not manage it every day because me and Joe are the kind of people who, to be fair, I think we're both the kind of people who, if we say like, oh, we're going to do something every day for a month, we don't manage it, but we get like 20 things done. So it might not be every day, but it'll still be far more than... <laughs> usual yeah, yeah. so you know there will be regular regular stuff um we might manage every day but you know joe's a, a teacher i do stand up so it's kind of trying to fit it all in as well as joe doing all his youtube stuff and us both watching the snooker but we'll try we'll try our best there'll be shorter kind of bite-sized episodes and uh we'll see you guys very soon let us know your predictions for the world championships has anyone else predicted Sean Murphy to reach the final? I doubt it. But it hey, that's the match for the World Championships. Oh. He could he could he could do, mate. He could you know, there's no ruling anyone out. It could be a, a Sean Murphy versus Jackson Page final. There's nothing to say it couldn't be that. So please do look forward <laughs> to the championships. Uh <laughs> let us know your thoughts and say hello if you see Joe at the Crucible later this month, and we'll uh we'll catch you very very soon um, good night up. JV <laughs> evening Hazel <laughs> beautiful there we go is it stopped or has it done that thing where it won't stop again <laughs>